So I get a lot of questions on which main board I recommend for 3D printers, particularly for the Ender 5 Plus here. My usual go-to response is the Big Tree Tech E3 Turbo. I find that the board has plenty of horsepower in the CPU, and it's got the 2209 steppers integrated right into the board, so there's less that you have to fool with when it comes to actually hooking up the board. Now, recently, or within the past few months, I've heard reports of the stepper motors in conjunction with the E3 Turbo overheating. And when I say overheating, I mean topping that 70C mark uh, for the motors during operation. Now, I wanted to take a look at what might be causing this. Now, to me, the most obvious thing that may be causing this is overcurrent going to the stepper motors, meaning you set what you think you want the current to be, usually 650 milliamps or 800 milliamps in my case, and they're getting more than that. And if that's happening, then yeah, they're gonna get hot because you're actually pushing more power to them than you mean to. So for this purpose, the only way I knew to actually get the current going to the stepper motors correctly was to actually buy me a multimeter, which to be honest, I haven't used in quite, a, quite some time. Um, and also get one of these current clamps to actually hook up between the stepper driver and the stepper motor so that I can see the current actually being fed to it. Now before we go any further, I just wanted to let you know it's been a number of years since I've needed an oscilloscope. Like I said, I just purchased this one, just got the clamp to debug things like this. So if you see me doing anything because you're experienced and you do this all the time that you wouldn't normally do, or if you know of a better way to do this, hey, please feel free to leave me a note in the description and I will be happy to learn from you. So just getting that out of the way and we can move forward with this. Um, I'm gonna get up close and show you exactly what I'm showing here on the screen as I do this testing, but let me first tell you my methodology. So first of all, I took this extension cable that you can get for the stepper motors. It is plugged in between the stepper motor drivers on the board and my Y stepper motor. That's just one that I chose that was easy to move around and easy to get the current off of. Now I'm assuming that since I've heard various reports of pretty much any of the stepper motors overheating, even the Z motors, which shouldn't even be getting that much current, I just chose one and we will see the results. So first of all, the board that I have in here right now is the SKR V1.4 Turbo. I need a benchmark before I even look at the E3 Turbo or I may not actually know what I'm looking at. I need something known good, something that I have not heard reports of overheating to actually measure against. So let's go ahead. Uh, what I'm going to do as I run the test here, I know that uh, both boards are actually set for 800 milliamps on the Y. So that's what I would expect to see here on my oscilloscope. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is basically just move that axis around. And as I move that axis around right here, you'll see that you get the waves off of that motor and since I'm using a clamp here, that's actually translating the, into the current, not the voltage. So let me get up close here so that you can see exactly what I'm seeing in terms of the results. All right, so here's the oscilloscope. And what I've done here, uh, I've already got it set up to what I think is going to be the correct scaling on here in terms of the timing and in terms of the wave height. And I've already got set up several measurements here along the bottom that I think will show me what I need to see. So down here, you will see that the amplitude will be measured, the top peak, and the RMS value, which this RMS value, according to the spec sheet that I've been looking at, is the number that we should be looking for. So 800 milliamps should show up as eight millivolts, according to the way that this clamp works. So what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to move my motor back and forth, and while it's running, I'm gonna hit stop. Now what that's going to do, that's gonna give me my waveform here and allow me to actually check out these measurements. So the reason I did amplitude, of course, amplitude is measuring from the bottom of this wave to the top of this wave, because the way I figure it, the maximum 
peak here should be half the amplitude. So for example, if we've got 21 millivolts, the average peak here should be 10 and a half millivolts up. That is pretty much verified here by this top value, which is 10.6. And the RMS value, the number that we were looking for to be eight, is showing up as 7.54 millivolts, which should be when we do the conversion, 800 milliamps. So this is what we'd expect. In fact, it's a little low, which is just fine with me. Uh, because to me, some, on something like this, a little low is better than a little high, keeps us from burning things up. So this is exactly what we'd wanna see on this motor. And then I'm going to save this screen off. I'm gonna check one more wire off of that motor because all of these should be the same. And then once we have a couple of data points, I'm gonna switch out this main board for the E3 Turbo and we will take a look at that board in comparison. So just to demonstrate where we are on the printer, I now have my E3 Turbo all installed and ready to go. And to show you what we're looking at, under configuration, advanced settings, you will see there's TMC drivers and there's the driver current. And this is that Y again on the other board, it was the same value, it's 800. These are all running my latest 2091 firmware from Marlin and I use pretty much the same base configuration for all the boards, no matter whether it's a turbo or you know, an E3 turbo or a V1.4 turbo, they're pretty much all the same base configuration. So I just wanted to show you that as we go into the E3 turbo testing. So now let's see if we get the same results as we got on the V1.4 turbo. All right, so here we are back at the oscilloscope. I'm going to use the clamp again and I don't think you can see them at this point. Let me just pan over a little bit. So these are the same wires from last time. Last time we started and did green and red. So let's do that here. I'm gonna do green and clamp it. Now let's see the results we get. Let's first get the waveform going by moving the Y axis. There we go. So the waveform's going and I'm gonna get it going real good. I'm gonna stop it. All right, there we go. So now let's look at our numbers. Uh, we've got 21 millivolts here, we've got 10.4 millivolts here, and we have the 7.76 millivolts here. Same results as we would expect. We are getting the actual proper current on the stepper drivers at this point, so this is exactly what we would expect to see. Let me save off that image. So with just some preliminary testing on this, it looks like this board is doing exactly what we'd expect. Um, and so at this point, the only thing I can do is run a couple of test prints on this printer. And after a couple of test prints, retest it, make sure nothing has changed. But other than that, there's really no other magic I can do to actually see uh, what could potentially be overheating these motors at this point if they're getting the correct current, which they appear to be. So let me do a couple of test prints. And we'll take a look at this wave as we get a few prints going. So I have been printing for literally days now. I have benches, I have calibration cubes, I have collapsible swords, 
and I have this big guy that I've been printing for at least three or four days at this point. Um, and I've got two conclusions for you. So first of all, let's take a look at the issue at hand and see what we're actually seeing here on the oscilloscope. So let's try to get a good run. That's a good one, I like that. And just as we saw before, um, I am getting an RMS of about 7.35, topping out around 10 millivolts, but definitely averaging uh, far below that eight millivolts that we were looking for. So everything looks like it's the same here as what we started with and what we were seeing on the other main board. I'm gonna save that off. I am gonna do some analysis, make sure I'm right by looking at some of these images that I've saved to my USB stick. So are we seeing the increase in the motor temperature that some other people have reported? Well, I can tell you these Z motors are definitely not too hot because I can touch them and they're just fine. This X motor is not too hot because I can keep my hand on it, looking at a temperature of about 33 degrees or so. Yep, 37, 38 at most. Now let's go to the Y motor here in the back which is the one that I have been studying the entire time. And I'm seeing about 55 degrees Celsius, which to be honest is the temperature that I have been seeing on it almost the entire time I've been running. So what are my thoughts on this? Well, first of all, there still could be a corner condition that I cannot reproduce on my printer. So that doesn't mean other people aren't having problems, but I can't reproduce it. The only thing I could do at this point is have want someone to actually Say, if you do this step, if you take this G-code file, you will see the issue or I am seeing the issue. So if you've got such an example that will reproduce it for you every time, send it over. I will see if I can test that. Um, but other than that, all I can say is the board seems to be performing exactly like it should be at this point. I'm getting good waveforms. I'm not getting an average over current on these. And like I said, I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary. And that is over a week of printing on this printer. My other conclusion for this has to do with the H2 extruder. I still don't like it. You may or may not be able to see from your vantage point, this is printing in thin air again. And it's like the third or fourth time in the past several days that I've been printing that it's been printing in thin air. It clogs on me using the standard heat break on this. And so I'm still getting clogs using the standard heat break. I'm still getting the clicking here uh, on my gears, which I think is just a tolerance problem. So uh, this will be the last time that I believe I will be seeing the H2 on this printer in particular. It doesn't mean you won't see it on this channel again because I actually had hoped to use it in some other places, but it's definitely coming off of here because it's made this printer completely unreliable uh, in different configurations and all sorts of things I've tried to do with it. So. There's your two conclusions for this video. I do wanna leave you with a suggestion though. If you find that you have overheating on your stepper motors, you shouldn't ignore it, particularly if you are getting temperatures on your stepper motors over the 70 C mark or so, 75 if you wanna push it a little bit. What you should do is first make sure that your stepper drivers are getting enough cooling. If those overheat, it is unknown exactly how they will perform and that definitely could mess up the amount of current going to your stepper motors or just the signal in general. Number two, if you still have overheating, make sure you turn down the current to those motors. If it's software controlled, you should definitely go into the menu and turn down the current. You can do 50 milliamps less, 100 milliamps less, and keep doing some testing. What you'll see if you've decreased it too much, you'll notice that you're getting layer shifts and you should probably not decrease it any further. Uh, the other thing you can do if yours is not software controlled, you can usually go into the printer physically and there are little potentiometers that you can turn down on the stepper drivers themselves that will decrease that current. I've covered that in other videos and unfortunately this video won't be able to show you exactly how to do that. So check some of my older videos for that kind of content. So I wanna end this video by saying thank you to the sponsor of this video, my Patreon supporters. First of all, they're the ones that came up with the idea for this video. And number two, they provide the financial backing that make videos like this possible and equipment like this to debug things like this possible. So thank you to them for supporting me month after month here. And if you'd like to join them, links in the description as usual. Thanks for watching these videos. Thanks for liking and commenting and subscribing if you haven't done that. 
And as always, I'm Chris. This has been Curzy Fabrications, and I will see you next time.